The HB Project and the HB Channel are supported by Hi-Fi Clubben. That sound kills good music. Many of you wrote to me, nice explication you did on MQA, but how does it sound? Well, finally I can comment on that, kind of. Before I give you my first impression on MQA, you do need to know a little bit more on how judging a playback system works to understand the limited value my first impressions might have. Professional reviewers, like myself, learn to recognize all kinds of properties of sound, especially those caused by limitations and faults of audio equipment. It can take me less than 5 seconds to recognize jitter in a setup that is completely unknown to me if it has the audio fingerprint I recognize. I once told a very well respected sound engineer during a demo that his recorder suffered from jitter during playback. He looked at me in a way I will never forget. A day later I heard there had been a defective cable in the system. Now this might sound like bragging, but it really isn't. Recording engineers have a different focus when they listen professionally. Listening for shortcomings in equipment is my profession, not theirs. And I will not be able to make recordings they do. I might be able to learn, as they might be able to learn my way of listening. Now, what's the relevance of this story for the MQA listening experience? It is important to realize that the judgment of me and my colleagues is for a large part based on pattern recognition. I have heard the pattern of jitter in the mid 80s when we didn't even know it was jitter and recognized it ever since. So it's even possible to hear a pattern that's not linkable to a known fault. For proper judgment it is necessary to find that link to prevent wrong judgment. MQA claims to do things that have never been done before to this extent as you might have seen in my two piece video on MQA. If not, watch those first by clicking the link in the top right corner. What exactly the impact is of this technique can only be judged through DA converters that are MQA enabled. To prevent confusion you want to use your own reference set, not because it's the best but because it's known. Rule of thumb is to only change one component you want to assess. In this case I needed to change two components, the DAC and the music files. Initially I only had the Meridian Explorer 2 DAC and the lovely 2L recordings that you can download for free from 2L.no. I'll put the link in the show notes below the video in YouTube. Don't get me wrong, the Meridian Explorer 2 is a great converter for the money, but it was only one converter and thus one incarnation of MQA decoding. The same is true for the 2L recordings. Luckily I was offered the MyTech Brooklyn MQA DAC, see the link in the top right corner for the review, and a nice collection of MQA encoded music. Amongst that was the 2496 MQA file of the Köln concert by Keith Jarrett that I already owned in 2496 normal PCM quality, thus equal to the decoded MQA, with the exception of the transparency claim of MQA of course. I also had the Christian Egan recording of Nielsen Piano Works, but the Jarrett recording gave me grip on the transparency claim or whatever you want to call it. Let me tease you a little bit more by first telling you that I now think I have the fingerprint of MQA, the transparency claim, and it was somewhat different from what I expected. There certainly is an improvement in transient response, for instance with the piano right hand and there is more tonality in the low tones, both things I always notice with chord DACs that have improved impulse response due to their long FIR filters. But with MQA, the way the recording venue, either natural or artificial, is reproduced is stunningly good on both DACs. 
then listening to the two L recordings and comparing the MQA version against the non-MQA version, assuming they are fully identical, it is clear that the separation between instruments has improved with MQA while the overall sound is more relaxed. On Riding with the King, BB King and Eric Clapton play 3 o'clock blues. Again, I had the 2496 versions in both normal PCM and MQA. Here the clean voices were most clearly the difference although the bass seemed to go deeper on the MQA version. I think this is due to the improved tonality in the lows. It was quite a bit harder to judge on music that I only had on MQA quality. The Amy Duncan album Under Currents, the first album to be released in MQA, sounded lovely but it was hard to tell if part of the sound quality was due to MQA. The resonance track on Hiroshi Fukamizu's album Everything for Drums mainly contained cymbals starting at a low level to increase halfway the track where a single drum is played and go back to the low level again. I don't know the normal version, but on the M MQA the detail on the cymbals and the lack of distortion was stunning. But the most beautiful recording that was lent to me was the uh, Kyoto Tabe recording of Beethoven's Piano Concerto V with the Bruckner Orchestra Linz directed by Martin Sieghardt. The pure piano tone and the lovely string sound made me play the two tracks I got time after time. What does that say about MQA? Rationally and scientifically nothing, for I didn't hear the non-MQA recording and I couldn't find the recording on AG tracks and the like. But I would be highly surprised if MQA didn't play a role in this sound. Although I am certain enough to tell you my first impressions, please do realize that I might have interpreted certain properties in the sound wrongly. With the introduction of CD I was amazed by the absence of woe and flutter, tracking distortion and noise. I initially was not paying atten attention to the properties that degraded the sound. Not for long, but still. Again, I don't think this is the case now but a year from now I will tell you whether I was right. And if I'm right, music reproduction made a clear leap forward, where the improvement might be even more valued in affordable equipment than in the highest of high end. I keep following MQA and stereo equipment in general, so if you want to stay informed, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there, but please view my questions video first. I'll put a link in the top right corner. More information is found below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the hbproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music. Dat dat kopperlijk sloof voor wat ik kan mogen.